In 1972, America left the lunar surface behind, then dismantled the Saturn V tooling, scattered blueprints, and watched mission knowledge fade into silence. Chinese scientists have spent decades asking why NASA's lunar capability vanished after such triumph. The consequences run deeper than budget cuts or headlines. What critical truths have been forgotten and what must be reinvented before anyone sets foot on the moon again? Rows of giant jigs and towering molds once filled the Saturn V assembly halls. Within months of Apollo's last flight, these tools were cut up, sold for scrap, or left to rust in empty warehouses. Precision gauges, custom welders, and unique casting rigs, all purpose-built to launch humans to the moon, vanished from the American industrial map. Blueprints that documented every bolt and weld scattered into government basements, contractor attics, or simply disappeared. In the 1990s, former Saturn technicians described searching for the lost Avcoat heat shield formula, only to find faded memos and brittle incomplete records. One worker remembered watching the tools that built the moon rockets get torched for scrap, and no one thought we would ever need them again. His voice held equal measures of pride and regret. The knowledge that once pulsed through teams of engineers and machinists faded as people retired or passed away. Even the surviving plans became puzzles, handwritten notes, obsolete measurements, and forgotten shorthand that modern teams struggled to interpret. By the time a new generation tried to rebuild lunar rockets, the physical and institutional memory had collapsed. Instead of picking up where Apollo left off, engineers faced a blank slate, the cost was not just financial, it was the loss of a living ecosystem, a web of tools, people, and practices that cannot simply be revived from old paper. This is the quiet erosion Chinese scientists point to, not sabotage, but the slow, irreversible decay of capability when the machinery of exploration falls silent. Artemis does not resurrect Apollo's legacy. Instead, it begins as a modern reinvention, shaped by software, digital engineering, and new industrial realities. In place of hand-drawn blueprints, today's engineers rely on cloud-based design platforms and virtual simulations. Manufacturing lines hum with robotic arms and automated inspection systems, tracking every component from supplier to final assembly in real time. The days of a single contractor controlling the process are gone, Artemis draws from a scattered network of new suppliers, each certified under updated safety and quality standards that did not exist in the 1970s. Flight systems that once depended on analog dials and hardwired logic now run on millions of lines of code. Avionics, navigation, and life support are orchestrated by digital controllers, requiring constant software updates and cybersecurity reviews. Even the heat shield, once a product of skilled technicians filling honeycomb molds by hand, is now machined in blocks, tested in computer-driven ARC jet facilities, and assembled with robotic precision. For Chinese scientists observing from afar, this transformation is more than technical progress. It is a reminder that the knowledge, tools, and habits of Apollo cannot be revived by simply copying the past. Each discipline, materials, propulsion, and guidance must be requalified under modern rules with new failure modes and new uncertainties. Artemis is not a continuation, but a systemic rebuild where legacy assumptions no longer hold and every solution must be rediscovered, revalidated, and recertified for a new era of lunar exploration. Artemis the Freus' return to Earth delivered a shock that rippled through every layer of the program. More than 100 sites across Orion's heat shield showed charred, flaked, or missing material. These were unexpected scars on a surface built to withstand the violence of re-entry. Engineers traced the anomaly to a hidden weakness. The Avcoat ablator, long thought to be a solved technology, behaved unpredictably under Artemis's skip-return profile. Gas generated by ablation could not escape through low permeability regions in the modern block-assembled shield. Instead, Pressure built up beneath the char layer until it fractured and it ejected chunks of material. Apollo's honeycomb filled Avcoat with its inherent voids had vented gas more safely. The new manufacturing process traded permeability for uniformity, exposing a flaw no ground test had caught. Arcjet facilities, 
replicated the skip return profile, confirming the same pattern of char loss seen in flight. One cast materials engineer reviewing the data put it plainly, legacy recipes degrade. Surprise is not failure. Delays mean responsible relearning. Every inspection, every failed arc jet run forced the Artemis team to rewrite their assumptions. The heat shield, once considered routine, was now a frontline challenge, demanding redesign and new qualification before astronauts could fly. Schedules slipped, but the alternative was unthinkable. Radiation does not announce itself with noise or warning lights. In deep space, every lunar mission must reckon with a silent, invisible threat, charged particles from the sun and beyond. The sun's activity rises and falls on an 11-year cycle, shifting the odds for every crew. During solar minimum, galactic cosmic rays reach their peak, delivering a steady dose of 1.5 to 2 millisieverts per day, 10 times higher than on Earth's surface. At solar maximum, the background eases, but the risk of sudden solar particle events spikes. A single storm can unleash enough radiation in hours to endanger a crew, overwhelming any unprepared shield. Shielding is not a simple fix. Polyethylene, prized for its hydrogen content, can cut solar particle doses by up to 90% with 5 to 10 grams per square centimeter, but every extra layer adds mass that rockets cannot easily spare. European and Chinese labs have confirmed the trade-off. Moderate shielding blocks the worst solar storms, but cannot fully blunt cosmic rays. International dosimeters on Chang'e landers, ESA's Matroshka, and NASA's crater report nearly identical readings, all pointing to the same dilemma. Engineers must choose between safety and feasibility, knowing that imperfect protection is the only practical path. The radiation problem is not a relic of the past, it is a daily calculation, shaping every timeline and design for the next journey outward. Under the electron microscope, grains of lunar regolith returned by Chang'e 5 reveal a landscape of jagged edges, splintered glass, and metallic flecks no larger than a red blood cell. Chinese surface analysis shows these particles are not just sharp, they are chemically active, laced with nanophase iron forged by billions of years of micrometeoroid impacts. In laboratory adhesion tests, dust clings to suit fabrics with a tenacity that water and air cannot wash away. Electrostatic charging under sunlight causes fine grains to leap and stick to every exposed surface, invading helmet seals, scratching visors, and wearing down moving joints. Suit material samples from Chang'e 5 trials display micro-tearing after only hours of simulated exposure. Toxicology assays on rodent and human lung cells, published by Chinese research groups, reveal that these grains provoke intense oxidative stress and DNA damage, far exceeding the effects of terrestrial dust. As Li Chun Lai, deputy chief designer of Chang'e 5 notes, each sample is a test of survival for future explorers. Its structure, chemistry, and reactivity must be understood before any return. Dust is not a relic of past missions, it is an active, evolving hazard, confirmed in every laboratory and every new landing. Gravity on the moon is not uniform. Hidden beneath ancient impact basins, mass concentrations, mass cons, warp the local gravitational field, tugging landers off course and distorting orbital paths by kilometers over time. Even Apollo astronauts had to correct for unexpected drift as their modules descended near Imbrium and Serenitatis where gravity anomalies reach up to 300 milligols. The risks extend below the surface. After 1977, when the last Apollo seismometers fell silent, no new global seismic data has been collected. Dr. Li Yan and her team at the Chinese Academy of Sciences used artificial intelligence to reprocess Apollo's old analog tapes, uncovering more moonquakes than previously recorded and linking heightened seismicity to Mascon boundaries. Without up-to-date monitoring, planners face uncertainty. Structures may stand on ground more restless than models predict. As Chinese engineers now factor in these findings, the need for new seismic arrays becomes clear. The moon's deep activity remains a blind spot for every future mission. Congressional budget cuts in the early 1970s slashed NASA's funding by more than half, shrinking its share of the federal budget to below 1% for decades. As Apollo ended, 
These financial decisions forced the shutdown of Saturn V production lines and the dispersal of skilled teams. Legal barriers added new complications. The Wolf Amendment, passed in 2011, prohibits NASA from direct collaboration with China unless Congress grants a rare exception. Earlier, export control laws such as ITAR restricted the flow of technical data and hardware, isolating American researchers from international lunar science. Chinese analysts trace a direct line from these policies to the slow erosion of United States lunar capability and to the fractured landscape that Artemis must now navigate. Inside Chinese research centers like NSSC and CAST, teams chart mission timelines and overlay data from Chang'e 4 observations on the far side with international findings. Scientists compare Artemis delays with their own technical hurdles, sharing dust adhesion results and seismic reanalyses in open literature. These labs do not speculate about hidden motives. Instead, they treat NASA's challenges as a shared problem one visible in the data and discussed across the global scientific community. Every year, the technical gap widens. Restoring lunar capability means reinventing, not repeating Apollo. As Artemis faces new hazards and unknowns, the real test is humility before complexity. The moon waits for those who respect its dangers. Share your thoughts below on what it will take to return.